All right, hey guys, we're gonna just wait a few more minutes, let everybody filter in, and uh, then we'll get started. We're gonna start with the 717 service from Hempstead to Penn Station. So while we're waiting, um, Keystone Corridor Productions asks, what's your opinion on the LIRR network for Transcend World? So it's kind of mixed feelings. Um, on one hand, you have all these different branches uh, making an appearance. It's not just the main line. Um, you got a good portion of the main line. You got part of the Atlantic branch. They got that little <clears throat> bit down to Belmont Park um, appearing. Um, yeah, it's a good variety of things. Um, but on the other hand, you got to really take the time to make sure these things are done done right. And it's in a good state compared to where the Northeast Corridor route was when it was released. This route is in a much better state, but there's still some things that need to be fixed. Um, I like the choice of route. All right, guys, clock just struck six. So uh, tonight is going to be similar deal to last night's live stream. I got three uh, different play sessions lined up. First is going to be the 717 service from Hempstead to New York Penn. The second is going to be the 728 service from Atlantic Terminal to Hempstead. And then finally, I'm going to be doing the Suburban Sunset scenario. So you got a lot of Hempstead, some Atlantic Terminal stuff, and then a lot of the mainline stuff, so it pretty much covers the entire entire route. Uh, one thing I am going to do a little bit differently tonight is I'm going to try to use the heads-up display as little as possible. I think I have uh, pretty much all the speed limits memorized for the most part, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm going to point out signal flaws just like normal. Um, I'm going to try to anticipate some of the ones that I know. But, uh, yeah. Hit me up with any questions. Uh, as we go, I'll be looking at the live chat. If I got time to answer them, I certainly will. Alright, let's get started. If you can't tell yet, I enjoy operating in the snow.
All right, so we're starting here in Hempstead, just waiting for the final passengers to board. Up ahead, um, these signals don't actually exist in real life, the pedestal signals. Uh, they're kind of more there just to help along the usability of the game and trains getting routed through uh, the interlocking here. Uh, but regardless, that signal's just playing restricting. So we got another 10 or so seconds to wait. We're gonna close the doors and we'll make our way through the Hempstead branch. So part of the reason I chose this particular Hempstead service tonight is because it's an express to Floral Park. Um, since we're looking at a lot of signal issues, I didn't want to spend a lot of time uh, stopping at stations, so I hope you appreciate that. I don't know if you guys spotted that. Uh, I've seen other people report that. So as soon as you pass the pedestal, uh, ped pedestal. Oh, geez, can I talk? Pedestal <laughs> signal <laughs> at the platform there. This next signal, the lights just go out completely. Um, but before it did go out, it was displaying approach medium. And now I'm going to turn off the heads-up display. So. Passing that approach medium signal, um, the cabs got upgraded to 60. 60 doesn't apply at all to this part of the line. It's actually 30 miles per hour on this stretch of track, and it's going to get down to 15 uh, pretty soon. So this is one of those situations where the higher speed on the cabs isn't indicative of being able to go that speed. You still have to know your speed limits. So we're rounding the curve, coming into Country Life Press. Again, express service, so we will not be stopping at Country Life Press. But I need to be mindful of the 15 mile an hour curve after the station. Part of the branch between Hempstead and Garden City is the slowest portion on this branch. Uh, it picks up considerably in speed once you clear Garden City. So as we approach guard and interlocking, the cabs just got downgraded to 30. Still a 15 mile an hour curve, so speed limits. Got an approach signal at Garden. Cabs got downgraded to 15. And we're already going 15, so no problem. Uh, 
Um, so we're going to be at 15 for a little while. The next code change point isn't for a considerable distance, so be, be a little bit patient. It's not as bad as uh, crawling at five miles an hour in Atlantic Terminal, but still is a little bit painful. The weather's really nice. I like the, uh, the snow. So the code change point is right up here, where we should get a, a bump up to 70, which is track speed. But even though it seems kind of ridiculous that we're stuck at 15 right now, a situation like this could happen in real life, where your cabs are just stuck at 15, maybe something's going on up ahead, and you're just cruising along until you pick up a better code. Alright, so we just picked up a 70 code. Gotta wait for the train to clear its length, um, to travel its length, before we can increase speed. It's probably right about here. We've gone the, the distance since uh, the cabs got upgraded, so we'll start accelerating. So the next speed restriction we have to worry about is, uh, well, there's two of them. The two curves just east of uh, Floral Park. So you, they go down to 60 and then to 50, and then you, uh, you're at Floral Park Station.
Okay, so I'm gonna start preparing to break for that curve. They come up on you rather quick, the second curve especially. There's the first curve, 60 miles an hour. Oh, the, the cabs got downgraded appropriately too, that's nice. And this curve is 50. And now we come into Floral Park. Alright, so now we'll be merging onto the main line. Got a clear signal coming into Queens. So once we get past this uh, signal right here, the speed limit will go up to 70, and the cabs are reflecting that, which is nice. It will bump up to 80, though, once you um, reach one of the signal bridges up here in Queens. Just double checking my next stop, it is Jamaica. Alright, so the cabs just got downgraded to 60. And I just saw my next signal, it was approach medium. Just get upgraded to clear. That's fine though. We'll wait for it to get upgraded to 80. Should be pretty soon, I think. There we go. So, like I said before, before you can increase your speed, Gotta let the train run its length. So as we get closer to Jamaica, we're gonna... I'm gonna start pointing out a lot more signal-related stuff. mainly the signal progression going into Jamaica.
So I believe we're coming up on a hillside facility. There is a 60 mile an hour curve up ahead, uh, those two reverse curves that go underneath the viaduct. So I'm just going to start braking for those. Now, I'm thinking in real life I would have gotten a, uh, the beginning of the slowdown into Jamaica, right there. And again, right here, you would not have a clear signal there, I guarantee that. Especially since we were switching tracks there at higher than track speed. Yeah, we should not have 80 on the cabs right now. It should be something like 40. And now they just drop to 15. Very strange. Alright, so, huh, got a restricting signal. That's fine, just gotta watch out for a few extra things. Things like broken rail, misaligned rail, stop signals, um, stuff like that. Alright, that's probably why they slowed me down to 15. Because, uh, that's a very slow speed switch. Um, just weird though that you don't have the signals beforehand to let you know that you do need to slow down. You don't just have a clear signal with 80 on the cabs, and then you hit a code change point, and get bumped right down to 15, and then be expected to be going slow enough to switch up ahead. It's just... There's a progression to these things. Alright, so we have a color signal displaying slow approach. It's the flashing yellow in the middle. And that's pretty normal aspect that you'll see in uh, these interlockings. And we got another restricting... Oh wait, no, sorry. Not restricting. Slow approach. Alright, so we're coming into Jamaica for our scheduled stop, and then I believe the final stop will be New York Penn. All right, let's let these passengers board. Our signal just got upgraded from stop to slow clear. And the 
This is J interlocking. Passengers got on fast. I guess it's cold outside. Yep, next stop, Penn Station. So J interlocking has multiple speed limits depending on which part of the interlocking you're in. Uh, the part that we're in is 15 miles an hour. But once we get up to the pen tracks up here, it will change to 35. So we're getting another restricting signal on that pedestal. Alright, so the cab's just got upgraded to 60, track speed here is 35, just gotta let the train run its length and then I'll start increasing my speed to 35. So this is part of J interlocking as well. It looks like a completely separate interlocking, but it's still controlled by J. And once we clear, once the entire consist clears that bridge, we will be authorized to go 80. if the signals will allow us as well. Well, they're having us wait a little bit longer, but at least I'm allowed to go up to 60 now. Maybe this signal will do the trick. Ah, there we go. Passing Q Gardens Station. I've always liked that giant building just randomly over the tracks. I don't really know anything about that building. Just weird how it towers above the tracks like that, right over it.
So we got about four miles, I mean, not four, uh, three miles, until we have to slow down to 60 miles per hour. The way I um, make keep an eye on the mile posts is by looking at the number placards on the signals. So the signal we just passed said 67 1. 67 meaning mile post 6.7. So at mile post 4 is where the speed limit changes from 80 down to 60. So I keep an eye on those numbers to know my location. Not many people know that. But I'll try to zoom in on uh, some more signals as we get closer. Alright, see if you can read that signal as we go under it. 57-1, so milepost 5.7. Five point one. So I've got about a mile to go before I have to slow down to sixty. Well, I have to be going sixty. Oh, there's another train. Four point five. So I have a half mile to go which happens to be that next curve up ahead. And we're in a great position to be going 60 at that time. All right, so now we're right about four miles away from Penn Station. signal types start changing here too to the uh, the G heads the color light signals I prefer these I like these a lot just because they're colors who doesn't like colorful stuff cabs drop to 60 we're already going 60 so it's not a problem Now, I don't know what's going to happen up here at Harold and Sherlock, and I don't know if they're going to move us around, have us stay on this track, and just take line two. Um, we'll see. The signals, if they were working properly, would tell us. But we're likely going to be switching tracks at a speed a lot higher than we should. Uh, we're just passing a clear signal now. So if I'm an engineer in real life on this territory and I pass a clear signal there, I'm just going to continue along at 60 miles an hour. I'm not thinking that I'm going to be switching tracks at Harold, but we'll see what the game does to us. We're probably going to get surprised up here. Uh-huh. Yep, there we go. Medium clear, I think is what I see there. Yep, medium clear. We're going to get thrown down to 40. And switching tracks. All right, so that clear signal on the pedestal that we passed just after Woodside should have been displaying approach, uh, approach medium. And it should have also given us a signal speed of, I believe, 30 on the cabs. That's... Or maybe that's a 45 mile an hour switch. I think that's a 45 mile an hour switch. So, you give us 40 on the cabs, and then we come into the interlocking, we'd already be going 40, hit that medium clear, and then switch tracks. Um, that's how it should have been done. But we were going 60 right into that, and uh, you saw the result. 60-1. The signals are not preparing you well enough to switch tracks.
is what I'm finding. Clear signal back there. You got a clear signal here. This is the distance signal for F interlocking. So we're lined up right now to go through line number four of the East River Tunnels. So we're coming up on F interlocking right now, and we have another clear signal, 60 miles an hour, happy as a clam. Got another clear signal coming into the tunnel. And there's snow in the tunnel. It's I'm not really a stickler for details like that. Oh, I know a lot of people are and they rip Dovetail Games a new asshole every time that they see stuff like this. Yeah, it's out of place. Yeah, it's wrong. But is it a game breaker? No. I do want to simulate the actual signal progression um, coming into Penn Station, though. Right now you have clear signals all the way up until you get to Penn Station, and that's just not the case. Um, when you round the second, when you finish getting through the second curve uh, up here as you get into Manhattan, uh, there's one signal that will display approach limited, and you'll be taken down to 40. And then the next signal will be approach slow, which will take you down to 30. And you have to be going no more than 15 by the time you reach the, uh, the interlocking at Penn Station. So we're going through that curve right now. We're still under the river, just coming into Manhattan right about now. Where's the next signal? Oh, there it is. So that's a signal that I would expect to be displaying something like Approach Limited. And that one I'd expect to be displaying approach slow. And now I need to slow down to 15 before getting into Penn Station. I actually braked a little bit too drastically there. Um, they don't actually have the signals in the correct spots in the game. Uh, I do have the accurate locations and it will be done properly in the future uh, by myself and other groups. But that was m my best way to simulate the signal progression coming into Penn. Approach limited, approach slow, and then you come into Penn Station at 15 miles an hour. And the, if everything's working properly, the cabs should always be at 15 in Penn Station. If you get anything higher than 15 in Penn Station, then there's a problem.
coming up to a stop at track number 20's platform, stop signal at A interlocking, gonna let passengers discharge and then I'm assuming that this train is gonna get stabled up in uh, West Side Yard. So this, uh, this service is pretty much completed. I'm going to let it complete so I get credit for it. Um, and then the next one that I had planned to do is the 728 service from Atlantic Terminal to Hempstead. Because I know you guys just love crawling through Atlantic Terminal at 5 miles an hour. And even though we were obeying all the uh, all the signals and stuff, even though we had some weird signals that slowed us down a little bit, we only ended up being four minutes late. That's nothing. I'm gonna grab myself a shot of vodka. If you know me, you know I love vodka. What time of, well, not time of day, but what weather shall I choose? Maybe, like, autumn clear. Alright, so what did I say? The 728 from Atlantic Terminal to Hempstead. I think that's later in the day. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna leave the alerter off because I'm just sick of it chirping at me. I'll still get the ATC alarms here and there, but that's fine. Oh, that's nice. I get to take off immediately. Don't have to wait around for people. So yeah, through the entirety of Brook 1 interlocking, that's the interlocking we're about to, to occupy. Through the entirety of Brook 1, it's 5 miles an hour. And you have to wait for the entire train to clear Brook 1 before you can even think of accelerating to the next speed limit of 45. Yes, it is painful, guys. I know. It bores a lot of people. I'm sure it even bores the engineers in real life. Five miles an hour is really, really, really slow for this. But I'll do my best to stay somewhat talkative and Maybe that'll help alleviate the, the boredom uh, a little bit. I'll just spew some railroad nerd terminology shit at you. Uh, so this signal that we have on uh, one track is different than the other signals that you see at Atlantic Terminal. Um, the other ones are low color light signals. Uh, this one particular signal uh, in real life, it's mounted on a wall. They, did, they didn't include the wall here. They just threw it on a, on a stick. Signal on a stick. And it's uh, the dwarf style. Its most favorable aspect is slow clear, which is what we have right now, slow clear. The other signals will typically display, or try to display, uh, restricting. All in all, it ends up meaning mostly the same thing. The engineers know that the speed limit's 5. And the cabs are going to stay locked at 15. Until you clear the interlocking. 
and uh, pick up a better code at Brook 2. I don't know about you guys, but I particularly like the lighting in this tunnel. It doesn't look too bright, too overly dramatic like I think the uh, East River tunnels look. I like this look. So uh, while we're waiting for the train to clear the interlocking, um, Charles Helfrich in the chat, uh, I hope I pronounced your last name right, Helfrich, Helfrich, I don't know the actual pronunciation, but anyway, he is asking if when they mentioned Ronkonkoma on the route in the timetable, I'm guessing is where he's talking about that, um, saying in the suburban sunset scenario you take over at Hicksville and take it into Penn Station, will they extend the route out to Ronkonkoma because it's only about 24 miles from Hicksville? So, I don't anticipate Dovetail Games extending this route at all. It's going to be up to the community once the uh, editing tools are released. So, uh, Charles, you, you got what you got with this route. Don't expect an official extension. I'm not ruling out the possibility, but I wouldn't hold your breath because you'll likely die. All right, so I'm going to spot my consist coming out of Brook 1 and see when the trailing end of the train clears it. It actually just cleared. So now, I'm allowed to proceed up to 15, because that's my cab signal aspect right now. See, that wasn't so bad. I took your mind off it by talking to you. So Keystone Corridor Productions asks in the chat, when they release the editing tools, are you going to work on some Amtrak routes? So if you uh, have been following me on Facebook at all, um, my group is called Northeast Corridor Simulator Development. And the goal of the group is to create Northeast Corridor content for train simulators. Um, the big project that I've been planning for well over three years now is the creation of the entire Northeast Corridor for Train Sim World. Very, very ambitious uh, project. I don't know if it'll ever actually get done to its completion, but it's what we're planning to do. It's what we'd ideally like to do, is create the entire Northeast Corridor for Train Sim World. We do have a draft of a development plan. It's not finalized yet, um, but just to give you the basics of it, we're going to start at Boston South Station, and the first section we're going to work on is from Boston South Station in Massachusetts to Providence Station in Rhode Island, uh, which happens to be my home state, Rhode Island. I live right next to uh, Davisville Interlocking here in Rhode Island, 150 mile an hour territory. Trains shake the house, actually, it's kind of funny. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, so back there, once we hit Brook 2 interlocking, our cabs got upgraded to 60. I let the train run its length, and then I accelerated um, somewhere around the maximum speed of 45. Got a curve up here before Nostrand Avenue, which is 30. So I am braking uh, 
right now to comply with that curve. Even though the cabs say 60, the speed is 30. Wow, I picked a nice time of day. I love that look. It's not quite... Oops, I'm overspeeding a little bit. Sorry, I was just looking at the, the scenery. It's not quite pitch black yet. You still have the, the light on the horizon, um, which I'm assuming could be from like lights in the city. It's a pretty cool look. I like that. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Look at that skyline. Oh, I love nighttime in this game. Nighttime just brings out the beauty of these routes, especially in the urban areas like this. I, I just love the, the street lights, and uh, I don't know. I, let me fawn over this for a moment. All right, back to the game. <laughs> So a lot of people wonder, well, if the speed limit is, well, in this case, 30, coming up to 45, why doesn't the um, the cab signal indicator just display the speed of the speed limit? Uh, in some cases, they do have them line up that way. Um, it certainly has the capability to line up with maximum track speeds, uh, but the best answer is more of a technical answer. And it's that the cab signal indicator by itself, cab signals, aren't tied to the track speed limit at all. They're signal speeds. So you can't think of them as the speed limit. It's not the speed limit. It's the maximum speed limit based on the signal that you just passed, the signal conditions in the block. Uh, in many cases, the actual speed that you're allowed to go is much lower. Like right now, and even in real life, this area in real life for engineers will display 70 on, on the cabs. The speed limit's 45. In the East River tunnels uh, between Penn Station and Woodside, in real life, will show 80 on the cabs. But it's 60 miles an hour. Theoretically, a Long Island Railroad train right now could go 80 in those tunnels. Theoretically, a real train could go 70 right here in real life. But once positive train control is cut in, and it's set to be cut in January 1st, all of that will change because positive train control will actually enforce the track speed limits and it will show it on here. The speed will be shown right there, and you still have your signal speed over here. But Dovetail Games didn't design uh, the positive train control system because it's frankly not cut in yet. It's not working yet, so Dovetail Games was like, hey, we don't want to put in the effort to put in something that's not there. And you know, I totally get it. All right, so we're coming into East New York. Here's where, uh, well, after the station, here's where uh, there are some speed limit discrepancies. I will go based on the real life speed limits. And I will explain them to you as, uh, as we go through them.
I love how they modeled this station. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the, the stone architecture. Absolutely beautifully designed station. Now, I've been told in real life that it's disgusting and people defile it. And yeah, but whatever. It's nice in game. So BB Gun 325 says in the in the chat, I just hope that they fix all those issues you mentioned before they release it for consoles. So there hasn't been a patch yet for PC. Uh, I don't know when there will be a patch for PC, but since but since um, the console release date I think is like four days away, they're going to be getting this exact same version of the game. All the same bugs will uh, still exist. All right, so next stop is Jamaica. So in the game, they have you still sitting at 45 miles an hour all the way through this curve coming up and even in a little bit into the straightaway before you get bumped up to 70, and that's not the way it is. So the 45 mile an hour speed limit changes to 60 right here. It goes to 60. They don't even have that in the game. They go from 45 to 70, but this part is actually 60. And then, once you clear the interlocking, you'll see the, uh, the signals down here. Once you clear the interlocking, then you're authorized to go up to 70. But the game will still have you sitting at 45, which, uh, which sucks. So this is East New York interlocking. And you got the signals right there that we're passing now. So once the entire train clears that point, we'll be authorized to go 70. Assuming the cabs will uh, allow us to do so. Right now they're holding us at 60 still, which is fine. Better than going 45. So this area of track has no wayside signals at all for about, I don't know, four miles between East New York and Dunton interlocking. It's all cab signal territory. All cab signal territory. So you gotta stay extra careful and mindful of your cab signal indicator. Now, as we get closer to Dunton interlocking, there are two code change points that will gradually bring you from 70 miles an hour down to 45 miles an hour, which is what is required when you hit Dunton. Uh, those are not yet simulated in the game. You'll still be allowed to go 70 all the way up to Dunton. I'm going to do my best to simulate that gradual downgrade. Uh, first, I'm going to go down to from 70 to 60, and then I'll take myself down from 60 to 45 as we... Uh, get closer to Dunton, all right? This route is actually surprisingly easy to drive without the heads-up display. Very few speed limit changes, and the speed limits that you do have are super easy to memorize. So, if you guys want to take the time, I can give you the speed limits. Uh, you can learn the territory a little bit, and then you can enjoy it without the heads-up display. The only thing I'm not totally comfortable with 
uh, doing without the heads-up display are all those um, station stops, like between Hicksville and Jamaica. All those uh, station stops, I don't know where the stations are. So I will be checking the heads-up display occasionally when I do Suburban Sunset. Alright, so I'm going to simulate slowing down to 45 in advance, getting the, the code change points. Because we are coming up to Dunton. We would have already gotten, a, I think, a 40 code right now, or maybe a 45, I don't know. So, it, this signal's wrong, too. This signal should be displaying approach medium. And it would probably give you something like 30 in the cab. Maybe even 40 in the cab. I'd, I'd take 40. That's fine. This next signal that's displaying approach medium should be displaying approach slow. That will certainly give you um, at least 30 in the cab, maybe 15. But I, a safe bet is 30. And then this next signal up here that's displaying medium approach, which should not be displayed at all, would give you 15. It should be a slow approach signal, not medium approach. So make sure you're not going any faster than 15 before you pass this signal, please. It's supposed to be displaying slow approach, not medium approach. So, no flashy here. And you do sound your whistle as you go under this little section. So, BB Gun 325 also says in the chat, Would have been nice if they added the abandoned Woodhaven station or the employee platforms before the interlocking. You're totally right. Right now, the tunnels, they're completely bland. There's no flavor to them at all. Uh, it's just one straight flavor. Um, so you're totally right. They should have added stuff like that. Wouldn't have been too hard either. We could have told them where it was, and they could have easily added those in. Uh, anyway, here's a big problem should not have a 40 code on the cabs in this interlocking. 15 only, guys. 15. A lot of signal issues coming into these interlockings, into J and the hall interlockings. A lot of signal issues. Mainly with approaching the interlocking. Once you're in the interlocking, the signals tend to be pretty good. Like we're coming up to a slow approach signal now, and then uh, ultimately a stop signal, which is perfect progression. There's no problem with that at all. Yeah, Keystone, Jamaica does look really nice at this time of day. I suggest you give the scenario a try, because th this is the best night lighting that I've seen yet so far in the game. Hall Tower looks beautiful. The skyline looks beautiful. It just all looks great. Alright, so I, I think next... Are we stopping at Floral Park? Oh, Hollis. We're actually making a stop at Hollis. Okay. I can do that. I'm going to try to do that without the heads-up display. I think I got a rough idea of where Hollis is. It's the station... Um... Shit. It's the station um, right after the hillside support facility. 
correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going purely off memory here. That's the one thing I'm not good at yet with um, Long Island Railroad. The stations. The names of the stations. Like, I'll pass a station and I'll be like, what the hell's the name of that station again? Alright, so slow approach signal. Now we have a restricting signal. Restricted speed is not exceeding 15 miles an hour, so you can go slower than 15 if you want to be extra cautious. There's a bunch of extra things that you need to watch out for when you're at restricted speed. I mentioned it before. Misaligned rail, broken rail, objects occupying the tracks, other trains, uh, stop signals. There's a laundry list of items that you got to look out for when you're at restricted speed. Alright, so we've got a clear signal at the 9899 signal bridge. And the cabs get a nice bump to 60. Can't start accelerating to 60 until the entire train has cleared that signal, so I'll spot it with the 3 camera. There we go, we're good. Wow, two trains racing into Jamaica. That's a cool sight. That is pretty freaking cool. Nice. Remember, these reverse curves underneath the hillside viaduct are 60 miles an hour. Do not go 80 on that that curve. Alright, so I'm thinking, I'm, as I said, I'm going strictly off memory here. I'm thinking that Hollis Station is right after the support facility. I'm going to double check once I... Oops, I went over 60 like I said not to. I'm going to check the heads-up display in a sec to see if I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, I got the right idea. I got that one right.
Now I'm thinking the next stop is going to be Floral Park. Unless I have a stop at uh, Queen's Village. Or Bellarose, whatever. Queen's Village. All right, cool. I don't exactly remember where the station is in relation to these signal bridges. I got the signal bridges kind of down for this interlocking, uh, Queen's interlocking, but um, not entirely sure where the station is in relation to them yet by heart. This is a good reason to learn <laughs> for not using the, uh, the heads-up display. Oh, okay. Alright, so I can get up to speed and then break just before that signal bridge. Okay. Actually, maybe a little bit before. Yeah. Alright, cool. I'll start breaking now. too hot. Damn it. I thought that signal bridge was going to be where I have to break. <laughs> Not where the station is. That's funny. Well, I still made it really nicely, actually. I had to break like a bastard, though. Yeah, lesson learned. Got a clear signal at Queens. Bellrose. Yeah, I got no idea where that station is if I keep the heads up display off. So I'm just going to keep it on for this one. I will do my best to remember where the, uh, the platforms actually are. Oh, all right, so it's at the far end of the interlocking, pretty much. Okay.
cabs got thrown down to 60 there. So now the next stop has to be Flora Park. There we go. Wow, exactly 1,000 yards. Never seen it actually show that round number, 1,000 before. Pretty freaking cool. So we're almost off the main line now. Uh, well, yeah, we're pretty much almost off the main line and gonna head on to the Hempstead branch. No need getting any faster than 35. That's a good speed to come in here. Cab's got a bump to 70. So, even though the cabs will say 70, this curve after the station is 50, and then the second curve is 60, and then it's going to be 70 miles an hour all the way up, into, up until uh, Garden interlocking. So we are going to be stopping at Stewart Manor. That's fine. starting to get a feel for where the stations are on the Hempstead branch. Like, I know that Stewart Manor is the first station after this next curve. But I haven't had to do any of this yet without the heads-up display. Cabs are getting dropped to 60. Okay.
So we do have Stuart Manor coming up. Started breaking in advance. Next stop is Nassau Boulevard, so it looks like this is going to be all stops to Hempstead. Man, you can see so many stars. It's crazy. Alright, next stop is Garden City. So we will have a speed limit decrease uh, coming into Garden City. The Garden City curve, I believe, is 50 miles an hour. But we're not going to be coming in there that hot anyway, because we're going to be making the station stop. And then we have the interlocking right afterward, which uh, will take us down to 15 for that first curve east of Garden.
there's another train that just left Garden City. By the way, if you guys have any questions about the signaling or anything, uh, start thinking of them now. I'll do my best to try and leave some time at the very end, maybe like a five minute, five, ten minute period, to answer some questions about uh, signaling at the end, just so you can get a verbal response from me. So we're coming up on Garden City, it's on this curve. Oops, I forgot to blow my whistle for that crossing. Sorry. That's a beautiful shot. That is a gorgeous shot. I'm gonna take a picture of that. Maybe that'll come up one time for a screenshot contest. So the next stop, I'm assuming, can be Country Life Press. Yep. All right, cool. So we still got 60 in the cabs. Um, once we hit that signal up there, the speed limit drops to 30. That's Garden interlocking. The first curve east of Garden, which is, like, right there, is where you get bumped down to 15. So make sure you don't go any faster than 15 going into this interlocking. Just save yourself some pain. So this is that 15 mile an hour curve. And then we'll have another curve, and that will be Country Life Press. Which is kind of a weird name for a station. I don't know why you'd ever have a station called Country Life Press. What does that even mean? I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to look up the history of the of the name sometime. It almost sounds like the name of a newspaper or something. So after clearing that first part of the curve, the cabs got downgraded to 30 from 40.
which is fine because this area of track up here is um 30. So iTube763 asks something about the marker, the marker lights. Um, to my knowledge, you either have to run to the back of the train to turn on the marker lights, or Matt Peddleston actually made a post today or yesterday, something like that, um, saying that there's a keyboard shortcut, I think it's control minus, to go to the back of the train and then you can turn on whatever you need to turn on there and then the same thing to go back to the front of the train. I, I think that might be worth a shot. But anyway, we're coming into uh, Hempstead. We just passed an approach signal. Had this little weird light on the bottom of it though. Um, I don't think that was supposed to be illuminated. There's no approach signal with a little light at the bottom. Now that light could be used for something like a stop and proceed. Absolutely. Thanks, uh, BB Gun325, for the clarification on the naming of Country Life Press. He says that it used to be a newspaper and it served the workers there. And he thinks that they actually helped fund the building of the station. So that's a pretty interesting little history tidbit. Uh, MBA PNYCN asks, how do you turn ATC on? Once I bring the train to a stop, I'll show you how to do that. There is a switch like that, like in Northeast Corridor. Uh, it's on the same rear wall. Uh, look at the top right. There's a series of three switches. One of them says ATC, one of them says access, and the other one is for the alerter. Only the uh, ATC and alerter ones are able to be used. Access is not yet cut in on the Long Island Railroad. It will be cut in January 1st. But because Dovetail Games was releasing the route prior to access being cut in, they decided to uh, leave out that feature entirely. But I'll point out where the uh, ATC switch is for you. So up here on the rear wall, like I said, top right, three switches, ATC, access, and alerter. You can toggle ATC to be cut in or cut out. Same thing with the alerter, access is uh, non-operational. All right. Is there a keyboard shortcut for uh, ATC? I don't know. Try control enter. I think for some reason I remember that being a thing. Uh, anyway, on to the last portion of tonight's stream. Sorry if I sound a little bit nasally. I've been, ever since this really cold weather has been coming through, I've 
just had so much mucus and stuff. Ugh. Anyway, like I was saying, last bit of tonight's stream, the suburban sunset scenario. One of the best, best scenarios. It's an hour long, approximately. It takes you from Hicksville, which is the east end of the route, all the way down the main line to Jamaica, and then you take the Penn tracks all the way to Penn Station. Really awesome scenario. Nice scenery because of the time of day. It's a really good scenario. Oh shit, did I accidentally choose change it to make a... Ah, I'll go back. Sorry about that. Change it to make is a pretty good one too. <laughs> I didn't mean to select that. If you haven't played Change It Jamaica, I recommend it too. You basically ride a train to Jamaica and then operate a service from there. There we go, Suburban Sunset. With all the station stops that we're going to be making in this one, I'm going to try not to be reliant on the heads-up display, but I, I got to work on where all the stations are. All right, so back to signaling. See that signal right there that that train is receiving? Uh, that's limited clear. That should not appear anywhere on the Long Island Railroad outside of Zone A. Now, for those of you who don't know the railroad terminology, Zone A is the area between Harold Interlocking and New York Penn Station. Harold Interlocking is where you switch off to the Long Island Railroad um, right before Woodside. Woodside is your first station right after Zone A. So you won't see that signal with the flashing uh, on the bottom head anywhere outside of zone A. So that signal actually should have been medium clear. It would have been the same thing, except the bottom part wouldn't be flashing. Oh look, my train's arrived. So we've got an approach medium signal at divide. We've got 60 on the cabs. Maximum speed on this particular track is 40, and uh, they got that right, so good. Oh, good. So um, NBA PNYCN says that control enter is working to enable ATC. So I, I, I was just going off memory there. I know that Matt Peddleston said something about that recently. Uh, glad that that worked out for you. Three miles until Westbury. All right, I'm going to turn off the HUD for a little while then. Maybe grab another shot of vodka. And I'm running low on vodka. Good thing I did a, uh, a booze run today. I picked up some uh, tequila, uh, 1800 silver tequila, and then I grabbed some, what did I get? Uh, Maker's Mark, for those of you guys who like bourbon. Maker's Mark is a great bourbon. Alright, so once the whole train clears that part of divide interlocking, we'll be authorized to go 80. I love it. We've got a clear signal here. Perfect.
1.2 miles till Westbury. I do want to get to the point where I can have no heads-up display and know where all these freaking stations are. There's just way too many of them to memorize this. But I guess I can use landmarks, like that switch right there. I could use that as a landmark. Because that seems like a good spot to start breaking. Oh, shit. We've got a lot of cab signal flips there. Did you see that? It went from 80 down to 60, down to 15, and then right back up to 60. Oh, wait, no. Or am I misremembering? It went from 80 down to 40, down to 15, then up to 60. That was a pretty crazy series of flips. Now, stuff like that does happen in real life. The cabs will just flip. I think that's part of the reason why you have to let your train run its length when you get your uh, when you get your cabs upgraded. Other than the other part of your train is still in the area of lower speed, but um, in the case of cab signal flips, why bother upgrading your speed if the cabs are just going to flip back? Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really, really enjoying this route. I wasn't expecting to see this much hate. Uh, there's a lot of hate, a lot of non-constructive criticism in the community regarding this route. They'll just say blanket statements like, Oh, the signals are bugged. Well, yeah, the signals are bugged in every route. Be specific. But there's a lot of negativity in the community uh, right now, and I wasn't really expecting it with this route. So, MBA PNYCN asks uh, a question in the live chat. He says, how come at some station stops the cab shows differently than the heads-up display sometimes? He says one time the signal was yellow ahead, and the heads-up display said that it was red. Which one do I trust? So, I don't really understand the question. When you say that the next signal is yellow, are you physically looking at the next signal and seeing that it's something more favorable than a stop? And are you looking at the next signal indicator in the top right and seeing that it shows red? Uh, I'm going to need a little bit more information before I can answer your question. Alright, so he elaborated, um, he says, yes, I passed a yellow signal, and it said session terminated past red signal. I haven't seen that yet. You're going to have to give me an exact scenario or service where that happened. Uh, in all of my testing, I have never seen that happen. If it's a stop signal, then yeah, but anything more favorable than a stop signal not seen that happen. Uh, 
but it all depends on what type of signal you were seeing too, which style. Like if it's one of these up ahead, like people are saying in the chat right now, these Pennsylvania Railroad signals, uh, the position lights, all use yellow lights. I mean, they're all yellow signals if we're talking strictly about color here. But there are other types of signals, and we have seen a couple different varieties of signals that, that Long Island Railroad uses other than these. It depends entirely, like they said, on which style of signal you are observing. I'm gonna turn the heads up, dis turn the heads off display. Oh my god! I'm gonna turn off the heads up display for this next station stop. I think I'm pretty comfortable with where Miniola is. Ugh, sinuses are so stuffy. I've got this stuff up in the cabinet that I think I'm gonna go use in a little bit. It's this nasal spray that actually has capsaicin in it. So, for those of you who don't know, capsaicin is the stuff in peppers that makes them spicy. So it has some capsaicin in the nasal spray, and when you squirt it up in your nose, it burns, but it, it gets a lot of stuff out. Not as good, not nearly as good, as the gas chamber at basic training. When I went to basic training uh, five years ago, uh, week five of Air Force basic training, oh, train's going by. Like I said, I live next to 150 mile an hour tracks. Train just went by me, maybe 90 feet from where I'm sitting at 150 miles an hour. Anyway, um, Air Force basic training, week five. They teach us all the stuff about the chemical gear and to show us how a proper um, mask works, they take us into uh, a gas chamber and they light up a, a bunch of um, little balls of concentrated tear gas, which, which is what they use to disperse crowds. And we're in a small, confined room, and you got your mask on, and you can feel it burning inside your ears before you even take the mask off. And then they say, alright, take the mask off, hold it to your chest, and say your reporting statement. I take the mask off, and instead of holding my breath, <laughs> I'd take breaths in just because I wasn't thinking. And, oh my god, it burns. It, they're not kidding. That is a, uh, a choking agent. And, uh, yeah, when you're walking out of, out of that chamber, mucus you thought you didn't have comes out. And you breathe better than you ever have in your life. So there have been times where my sinuses are so messed up that I beg for that gas chamber again. Yeah, I've been like, yeah, well, I could go for some tear gas right now. Underestimated the brake a little bit. It's alright, it'll be fine. Alright, so iTube763 asks if I use an Xbox controller. No, I'm strictly keyboard and mouse when it comes to a PC. Uh, I do occasionally like chilling on the couch. I've been trying to set up some kind of uh, wireless mouse and keyboard setup that I can comfortably use on the on the couch. Haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'm getting closer. I'm sitting at my my desk right now with the uh, with the keyboard and mouse. I got the boom mic right here.
so that's another thing that's random. I don't know if you guys noticed as we approached uh, Mineola. We got an approach signal. Cabs got thrown down to 40. And just from experience, I know that when we pass those block signals up there, that the cabs are going to get thrown back up to 80. So why have one signal block of 40 miles an hour? Truth is, I got no freaking idea. I think it's a signal glitch. It should stay at 80. But it's not a big deal, because in most cases, you're going to be stopping at Mineola anyway. But just so you know, I do suspect it to be a, a glitch. Yeah, see? Just got bumped up to 80. Gotta let the train run its length, and then I'll start accelerating to, to 80. Or maybe not. How far away am I on from Mount... Oh my god. Tongue twister. How far away am I from Marillon Avenue? A half a mile. Might just get through this curve and then just start braking. lining up a screenshot. It's pretty. Looks nice. It's a shame, though, that they only decorated so far. Like, you can look, I don't know, just a couple thousand feet, not even, into the distance and you just see nothingness, just rolling hills as if it's a desert out there. I was hoping that they'd decorate a little bit further out, to be honest. New Hyde Park. Getting closer and closer and closer to Jamaica. I'm comfortable around Jamaica. But out here with all these constant commuter stops, not quite comfortable yet, like I've said. So... MBA PNYCN asks in the live chat, what do you think the editor will do for Train Sim World? I'm, uh, I'm really excited for it and to see what people on the download station think of it. I don't know what that means, download station. Um, especially scenario-wise. So what do I think that the editor will do for Train Sim World? Well, first of all, it's going to allow us to finally utilize Unreal Engine 4 in a train simulator. So up to now, we've just had these disappointing, lackluster, inadequate
game engines to, to work out of. Really low frame rates, even on high, high end computers. Um, crashes all the time. Sorry, had to blow the horn for the crossing. Um, crashes all the time for seemingly no reason. With Unreal Engine 4, a lot of those limitations are lifted, so to speak. It's extremely optimized, very easy to work with. Um, I highly suggest you get, get familiar with Unreal Engine 4 if you haven't worked with it yet. Uh, very easy to work with, 64-bit compatible, scales very well with high-end PCs. So if you build a high-end PC like I like to do, you're going to see the performance benefits. But as for what the tools themselves will do for the simulator and for the community, it's going to finally allow uh, the creation of third-party content. We know that you'll be able to create your own 3D models and easily, easily import them into Unreal Engine 4. You can create things in Maya and uh, 3ds Max, export them to FBX, and then immediately import um, those FBX files into Unreal Engine 4 and start drag and dropping them into your levels. Stuff like that was very, very, very convoluted and required a lot of workarounds and stuff to get it to work in Train Simulator, not with Unreal Engine 4. It's drag and drop. There's a lot of native functionality, a lot of uh, things that were cumbersome in the original Train Simulator editor are now super freaking easy. Even things like repaints with uh, this editor is going to be trivial. It's going to be nothing at all to do a repaint. But scenario-wise, um, just to answer the last bit of your question, uh, you said scenario-wise. Um, scenarios, I think, are going to be considerably easier to create. There's going to be a lot of the same fundamentals. Um, there are going to be cases where the pathing on the trains, the automatic pathing doesn't route your trains on the right tracks that you want, so you're going to have to do a lot of manual pathing to get your trains moving where you want them, but scenario creation should be simple and accessible for the masses. I wouldn't worry about difficulty when it comes to scenario editing. I'm very excited for root editing. Very excited. So, Brom Thymol Blue asks, when is the Unreal Engine 4 interface coming? I'm assuming you're asking about when is the editor coming. Uh, truth is, we don't know. We honestly don't know. I'm hoping that it pops its face up sometime before the end of the year, but truth is, we really don't know. It will be coming soon, though. I wouldn't worry uh, too much about it. It's gonna, it's definitely gonna pop its face up in 2019, guaranteed. You'll be making content before you know it. So iTube763 asks, the New Haven to Boston route that I started uh, looks pretty good. Thank you. Will you make it for Trainsim World or another route such as New York Penn to Albany? So uh, I stated previously in the stream that my group is planning the development of the entire Northeast Corridor from Boston South Station down to Washington, D.C. Um, it's a very ambitious project. I don't want to get into... No, damn, I just really overshot that platform. Um, I don't want to get into too many details right now, but we're going to start development up in Boston South Station, uh, work our way to Providence, Rhode Island, and uh, see where we go from there. 
that first section I mentioned from Boston South Station to Providence is right around 42 miles. So that gives us plenty of time to get used to the tools and make a, a meaningful section because there are trains that regularly originate and uh, terminate at both Boston South Station and Providence. So it's a, a healthy section, 40, right around 40 miles is a good beefy section, makes for a typical route length for trains in the world and uh, allows us to get used to the tools and still have a meaningful section. What's going on with my doors? Oh, is it because I don't have the brakes on? There we go. That's another thing. Do not have the throttle set to idle or to accelerate. Gotta have the brakes on to close the doors. All right, so now that we're heading into Jamaica, I'm comfortable turning off the heads-up display now. I'm not making any more of those commuter stops. Got an approach medium signal coming up here at Queens. I believe that's Queens interlocking. Maybe I'm wrong. Is that Queens? Queens. Whoa! What the hell is that? That should not be there. That's limited clear. That doesn't appear outside of zone A. And besides, switching tracks here is at 80 miles an hour. Or so it should be. So we had a approach medium signal that kept our cabs at 80 and then we run into a signal that shouldn't even be here limited clear there's so many things wrong with that um, first of all limited clear is a zone a exclusive signal should only appear between New York Penn Station and Harold interlocking where the Long Island Railroad switches off from the Northeast Corridor Second of all, um, the approach medium signal that we got before switching tracks didn't downgrade the cabs at all. They kept them at 80. If we actually were going to be switching tracks in real life and the switching speed was 40, we would have received an approach medium signal that threw the cabs down to 40. It wouldn't keep them at 80. So we're going into this 40 mi supposedly 40 mile an hour switch at 80 miles an hour. See, that's the kind of stuff that is going on with the signal system right now. Trains are switching tracks, but there's no warning to slow down beforehand. And I'm not talking about a speed limit sign, and I'm not, I'm not talking about something popping up on the heads-up display. I'm talking about the cab signal system working the way it should, and informing the engineer that he has to slow down to a certain speed to prepare for something coming up ahead. 
and that's just not happening right now. Approach medium is mostly in this route being treated as a clear signal. It's just keeping the cabs at 80. I hope that little rant makes sense. If you got questions about it, let me know. I can answer any question you guys have about signals. Believe me. I've done so much research into this, it's ridiculous. Mostly for the benefit of myself when uh, it comes to developing content for this game, but also because I spent five weeks before the release of this route beta testing this route. So I was learning the signal systems from scratch. I thought it was close to Amtrak's, but uh, because the signals look the same, I thought it was pretty similar to the way Amtrak does things. But I was wrong. Long Island Railroad is a completely different beast. Alright, so now we're passing the uh, platforms for the Hillside Support Facility. These platforms are for employees only. Passenger trains do not stop there. Well, they don't take on or discharge passengers there. Oh shit, I'm going way too fast for this. I forgot about the 60 mile an hour curves up ahead. Oh wait, I'm not on the track for the curves. Phew. But still, I should be slowing down. Because I'm coming up to haul interlocking and I'm going to need to prepare to go 15 miles an hour coming into Jamaica. So right here in real life I'd probably get something like, I don't know, approach medium that would throw the cabs down to 40. Or maybe even approach slow and throw the cabs yeah, probably approach slow and throw the cabs into 40. Yeah, so MBA PYNCN says, It never told me to do 60 at that curve that you were just at. Yeah, <laughs> it's supposed to be 60, and it was 60 during the entirety of my testing. The beta testing. It was 60. And then for some weird reason... At release, it got changed back to 80? I, I really don't know how that works. Alright, so now we really need to start slowing down to 15. Because we're coming into the main part of hall interlocking, which requires 15 miles an hour. So that signal shouldn't be here either. That's medium approach. It should be displaying slow approach. The same thing, except the bottom head shouldn't be flashing. That signal that's showing right there is another one of those that should only appear between New York Penn Station and Harold Interlocking. There's a very, very, very distinct difference between those two signals. The one that is being displayed, medium approach, means proceed prepared to stop at the next signal. Trains exceeding medium speed, which uh, can be up to 40 miles an hour, in Long Island Railroad territory uh, must begin slowing to 40 as soon as the signal is clearly visible. The one that should be displayed, slow approach, uh, means proceed prepared to stop at the next signal. That part's the same. You gotta proceed prepared to stop at the next one. Um, but it's slow speed within interlocking limits, which is either 15 or 30, depending on the situation the speed, that is. In this case, this part of the interlocking slow speed is going to be 15. So, to put it in layman's terms, when you pass the slow approach, um, proceed prepared to stop at the next signal 15 miles an hour within interlocking limits. And we're within Hall interlocking. So that's how you control your train, 15 miles an hour.
If you guys have not read my signal guide yet for Long Island Railroad, I made a very comprehensive, technical, but easy to understand signal guide for this route. I will refer you guys to it if you haven't seen it yet. After the stream, that is. Spent a lot of time on it. Covers every, sig eh, every single signal <laughs> aspect that you'll uh, receive in the game. It doesn't just provide the official definitions. It'll go into my personal explanation of the signal. It'll provide you with practical examples of the signal in use, pictures of the signals. Pretty much anybody should be able to have a firm understanding of the signal system after reading my guide. And part of the reason why I do these live streams is to kind of reinforce that and uh, teach people even more. Wow, the frame rate really dipped when these two trains came in here. Damn, the frame rate is suffering, and I got a pretty good PC. These two trains just came in at the same time. It looks like one of them came off the Atlantic branch, and one of them came from Penn Station. And then you got a bunch of trains just chilling out in uh, D Yard. This little section right here from Station Track 1 over is uh, called D Yard, and uh, 10 mile an hour movements through D Yard. Man, they really stuffed the trains into this one. Christ. Alright, let's see what the next station is. It's... I don't know. Would they have me start at Kew Gardens? Oh, no. Alright, good. Express to New York Penn. Perfect. I'm going to turn off the heads-up display now. So the signal that we just received at the platform is slow clear. All that slow clear means is proceed, slow speed within interlocking limits. That's it. And slow speed in this case is 15. The proceed part of that signal rule is important because it tells you that the next signal is not going to be a stop signal. That's the difference between getting something like slow clear versus sl uh, slow approach. The difference is whether the next signal is going to be a stop signal. With slow clear, you don't have to worry about the next signal being a stop signal. You know it's not going to be. With something like slow approach, it says in the rule, proceed prepared to stop at the next signal, slow speed with an interlocking limit. So that's the, the difference. It prepares you better.
All right. So the cabs are at 60. Track speed is 35 until we clear this interlocking. Then the track speed will go up to 80. But then again, got to follow the cabs. The lowest of the two applies. Track speed is now 80, but the cabs are showing 60. Lowest applies, 60. Just hit a code change point, which upped us to 80. So we're good. Fly zone. Like I said in the uh, the first service. There's a 60 mile an hour restriction coming up in about, I don't know, three and a half miles, about three miles. So there's number boards on the signals that tell you of the location you're currently at. I'll give you some more examples as we pass, uh, pass more signals up ahead. Here, let me zoom in on this signal bridge. Try to read the number below the signal head. That one says 67-2. The 67, the first part of the number, is indicative of the milepost, 6.7. That means 6.7 miles. I, I, I don't know if it's, I think it's from Penn Station. So I know based on uh, the special instructions and the general notices and all that, that the speed limit changes from 80 to 60 at milepost 4. So if based on these numbers I can determine my milepost, I know where I need to start braking to be going 60 at milepost 4. So we just passed 57-2, so I'm at milepost 5.7. Alright. Got 1.7 more miles to go before I need to be going 60 miles an hour. That's something I hope you guys are able to make use of as well. Those numbers. They're not there for no reason. 51-2. Milepost 5.1. Got a mile to go. I'll typically start braking at this bridge, which is a half mile from the restriction. You'll see on here, I think it says 45, yeah, 45 dash 2. The number at the very end is the track. Go on, I'm on track 2. we go. We're at milepost 4 right now, and I'm going 60. So now the signal styles begin to change as we approach Harold interlocking. So um, this is the distance signal for wood interlocking. We've got a clear signal. Cabs drop to 60. Fine. We're approaching Woodside Station now. I mean, I'm sorry, those weren't the distance signals for wood. Those were the home signals. I'm sorry.
All right, so we'll see what the dispatcher decides to do with us. Throw us around some tracks. I got a clear signal right now on the pedestal. So I'm proceeding as if I'm not going to be switching tracks at all. 60 miles an hour is the speed limit through you. Why, sh when I get a clear signal, should I think I'm switching tracks? Hopefully I don't switch tracks, but I very well might. Who knows? This game is very unpredictable so far. So we're coming into Harold interlocking now. We'll see what kind of signal the pedestal gives us. The pedestal is giving us an approach signal. All right, that's different. Holy shit. All right. We're not switching tracks, but our cabs just dove down to 15. That's not right, guys. Shit, we got a stop signal up ahead. That's why the cabs dropped to 15. All right, you don't just go from a clear signal to an approach signal that quickly and then into a stop signal. There's warning in advance. So that signal, that clear signal that I passed um, just after Woodside should have been, I don't know, probably approach medium. It probably should have been approach medium back there at Woodside. Uh, probably should have dipped the cabs down to, I don't know, 40. Maybe even 30. Because uh, two signals up is a stop signal. Things like that. You know, there's just no warning that other signals are coming up. And there should be, like in real life. There should be more warning that a situation like that was going to happen. I shouldn't have gone from 60 miles an hour and have the cabs dive down to 15 and then have a stop signal up ahead. It's just not the case. It shouldn't happen that way. But it's all right. It, the first thing that that signal upgraded to was medium approach. All right, I don't know why I have a clear signal there and I'm switching tracks. That should be uh, limited clear. Because this is zone A. Remember, I kept talking about Zone A, those Zone A exclusive signals. Limited clear is something that's regularly used here to have trains switch tracks. Alright, so we're lined up to take line number two through the East River Tunnels into Penn Station. We're approaching F interlocking right now. I got a clear signal at the... Uh, East limits of F interlocking. That's green over, solid green over solid red. Clear. Got another clear signal at F. And then I see... Ooh! It was an approach medium signal, it just got upgraded to a clear signal, right here. Got Hunter's Point Avenue off to the left, and we're going into East River Tunnels line number two. So, like I did in the first service to Penn Station that I did this evening, um, I'm going to attempt to simulate the proper signal progression approaching Penn Station. Right now, all you have are clear signals coming into Penn Station. It's not the case. So when you round the last curve as you're coming into Manhattan, you'll get, in real life, an approach limited signal, which will have you slow down to 40, followed by... Oops, one second followed by a approach slow signal, which will enforce 30, and then you'll have to be going no more than 15 by the time you enter the Penn Station area. So I'm going to do my best to simulate such a progression.
All right, so right about here is where I'd expect to get the approach limited. Remember, the signals are misplaced in the route. They don't have the signals in the right spots. And then a little bit further up, I don't know, I'd expect to get the uh, approach slow, which will bring me down to 30. Yeah, that's a good spot for it, right there. That looks fine. And then you just have to slow down to 15 by the time you hit the interlocking before the station. See how nice and gradual that was? I went from 60 down to 40, down to 30, and then down to 15 before I hit the interlocking. So some of you guys might have gotten scared as I came into the interlocking. You saw that I had a clear signal, and then you saw a stop signal up ahead. You're like, oh my god, stop, stop, stop. When you get a clear signal like that, green over red, it means that the next signal is not going to be a stop signal. When you pass an approach signal, yellow over red, that could mean that the next signal is a stop signal, certainly. Uh, another thing that I want to bring up is that my cabs got upgraded to 60 at one of those signals back there. Not the case. Shouldn't happen. Should always be 15 inside Penn Station. Always. It's actually kind of interesting we're coming in on 7 track. I don't think that should ever happen. I talked to a Long Island Railroad employee recently who was testing this scenario, and he's like, yeah, I, I was doing this scenario when I came in on 7 track. They, yeah, that doesn't happen. I'm inclined to agree. This track is uh, pretty much just primarily used by uh, Amtrak. I think New Jersey Transit can use this track, too. Nice signal sticking through the light right there. But yeah, we're here. We are at Penn Station. We finished everything that I wanted to accomplish tonight. The 717 service from Hempstead to Penn Station, the 728 service from Atlantic Terminal to Hempstead, and then we did the Suburban Sunset scenario. Covered a lot of great stuff tonight. Think of some questions, guys. Uh, I'm gonna keep this stream live for a few minutes while I relieve myself in the bathroom. Um, yeah. All right, so think of some questions. I'll be right back. And then I'll give you guys that signal guide that I made for Long Island Railroad.
Alright, I'm back. So, while you guys think of any questions and write them down, or whatever, I'm going to get you the link to my forum post. I actually posted it on the forum, the Dovetail Games forums, with the, uh, the signal guide. It got some visibility, not as much as I was expecting, to be honest. But I spent a lot of time on it, very detailed. I was actually talking to a Long Island Railroad locomotive engineer uh, on some of this stuff when I was working on it, and uh, a conductor for Long Island Railroad as well. And the conductor said, yeah, there's no problems with this. This looks good. So I'm actually getting employee approval for the stuff I'm doing now, which is pretty cool. Uh, where the hell am I going to try to find this? Uh, Transform World PC. Community submissions. Alright, there we go. I just linked the signal guide in the live chat. You can find it in the community submissions section on the Train Sim World forums. The PC section. So, MBA PNYCN asks in the live chat, would these simulators be good for employee training? <sighs> if they were perfect, yes. Um, they're not, though. The signals are not perfect. The speed limits are not perfect. Um, the physics, I don't know. There have been some critics about the physics. But for the fact that the speed limits and the signals don't work the way they actually work in real life, this wouldn't be an adequate simulator for employee training. So I'll give you guys another couple minutes to uh, think of and ask some questions, but uh, at 8.40, which is three minutes from now, I will uh, we'll end the stream if I don't have any other questions. So take your time, and I'll grab myself another shot of vodka. That was a good two and a half hour stream. Damn, that went by fast. So, iTube763 asks, have you ever seen the Acela simulator that Amtrak has in Maryland? Um, I wasn't aware that they had a simulator in Maryland. Uh, don't they have that at CNOC in Wilmington, Delaware? I have seen some footage, brief footage of it, but no, I've never actually seen the simulator. In person, that is. Anything else?
Got about a minute and a half. All right, so NBA PNYCN asks, are you involved in the feedback to Dovetail? Yeah, so I'm part of the beta testing team, so I can't get into many details regarding that. But for the past five to six weeks, I've been part of a team that was testing Long Island Railroad. Um, the route has improved a lot over its de uh, course of development. A lot of bugs reported, maybe about like 70% of the signal bugs have been fixed. The ones that I'm pointing out are the only ones remaining. It used to be worse. I'll admit, Dovetail Games impressed me when they made certain strides in fixing certain issues, especially regarding signals and speed limits. But yes, I do test content for them. All right, if that's everything, then I'm going to close the stream down. You guys have the link now. I, I post it in the live chat to the signal guide that I created for Long Island Railroad. I released it before the release of the route, and it can be found on the Dovetail Games forums. Just go to the Train Sim World section of the official Dovetail Games forums, go to the PC section, and then the Community Submissions sub forum and you'll find it in there it'll be named something like long island railroad signal guide unofficial and it's a 25 page pdf that i put together uh describes every single signal aspect in great detail pictures the official definition my definition practical real life examples what it will display wh which numbers will display on the cab signal indicator all stuff like that and I go into detail with uh, the more technical side of the signaling as well for those of you who enjoy such things. If you got any questions about the signal guide, you know where to find me. Um, you can hit me up on the, the Dovetail Games forums. You can hit me up on Steam. You can hit me up on Facebook. If you're part of my Facebook group, Northeast Corridor Simulator Development, you can hit me up there. If you're my friend, just message me. I'm very, very accessible. Always, always happy to answer people's questions and help improve the experience that they have when using the simulator. Alright, so you guys know where to find me. Thank you for joining me for this two hour and 40 minute live stream. Went by very, very quickly, and I'm sure that the alcohol is part of that. <laughs> have a good night, guys. Thank you for joining me.